So Shaw's coaching evaluation for the Stanford Cardinal is difficult, difficult because he kind of has three separate tenures in the midst of his 11 year tenure. So during his first six years, when you just look at it from a record perspective, but also when you consider, you know, the, the program that he is at and, you know, how successful they were, his first six years are an unquestioned A bordering on an A plus. I think the only thing holding him back from getting an A plus there is a college football playoff appearance, which they very nearly had, but lost a late season game to Oregon and Vernon Adams at home in, in Palo Alto. But the first six years are an A. Then it's about a B to a B plus for, for the next couple. They won uh, nine years or nine games in, in back-to-back seasons. I think it was, but then the last three years, it's been a, about a C minus because they've had sub 500 seasons, in each of the last full football campaigns in the PAC 12 in 2019. And then in 2021, what, 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 I don't know what to do with that. It's really, really tough. I mean, I, I'm landing overall because I'm examining the totality of his tenure. I'm landing on an A minus because I can't forget that Stanford, who at the end of the 2000s, the first decade, was a joke of a program. Jim Harbaugh turned it around and then David Shaw continued upon that momentum. But that's not always an easy thing to do. Ask Mark Helfrich at Oregon. He did it for a little bit. And then it went down into the tank and Oregon has, has since moved on in several ways with multiple head coaches. But I, I can't just forget, you know, even in, in light of the last couple of years where Stanford has struggled, that Stanford was a player with big time educational standards on the national stage for a long time. Now, they also have a fairly large endowment over at Stanford and they're capable of being good, but it is not an easy place to coach it's not an easy place to recruit but in 11 years he's 93 and 45 that is an outstanding record for a college football coach at any program in any conference let alone at stanford where they're recruiting a certain sort of, of player not in a bad way per se but they're right i mean we all understand what what, what the limitations are or what the the extra challenges presented while while at stanford as the head coach now i will say when you have an extended run in college football as a head coach, the way David Shaw has had with, with one school, it's really hard to be good to great every single year, right? Nick Saban does it, but Les Miles couldn't keep doing it or couldn't stay at the level where LSU wanted him to. I mean, there, there's copious examples of coaches who were good, but, you know, that then started to fall off a little bit. And it was like, oh, he was at the top. He's really, really good. And then started to drop down and such. It's really, really hard which is why I'm not yet giving him a, a significant drop-off in his overall grade for the last two or three seasons being under 500. But if it happens again this year and Stanford drops, you know, a four and eight, even a five and seven record this season, then he would fall out of the A category because you can't rest on your old laurels forever. But I think that the level he had them at, winning multiple Rose Bowls, Right. It's just getting to those sorts of games, winning conference championships. I can't just ignore all of that, but it does start to fade if you start to, if you are the head coach of the program that is steering itself down towards the bottom of the conference where they've been the last couple of years. But his overall valuation is just so, so difficult because of that. I mean, you win 10 or more games in five of your first six seasons. He had a four and two bowl record in those games. They lost in the Fiesta in 2011 and the Rose Bowl in 2013. I think it was against Michigan State, if memory serves, on a goal line stand. You talk about smash mouth football. Stanford and Michigan State is the epitome of that. But he also won two Rose Bowls and he won a Sun Bowl. And then there was a, a, a mid level bowl in there as well. After that six year run where he had five 10 plus winning season, 10 plus win seasons. It was back-to-back -back nine win seasons. That's kind of the B to B plus I, I was talking about. They went one and one in a couple of non-New Year's Six Bowl games. They lost in the Alamo Bowl to TCU, which is apparently a theme for the Pac-12 to just lose in the Alamo Bowl. That's a, a really, really common thing when you look at it anyway. And then they beat Pitt 14 or 13 in the Sun Bowl, right? So that was kind of like, eh, okay, this Stanford football, you win in nine games a year. That's, that, like that, that's fine. That's acceptable. Not incredible, not what it was not that long ago, but it was fine. But now it's two out of three losing seasons in which Stanford is 11 and 19 
o- over the last three campaigns overall. And I think that now, because we know what Stanford is capable of being and where David Shaw has had that program, you do start to view it in a different light compared to how you might have seen it, you know, 10 years ago. I mean, what year or sorry, f- 15 years ago or so when it was a program that if they'd won nine games, you would have been jumping for joy as a Cardinal fan been. That was fantastic. We won nine games. That was amazing. But now you've seen Stanford be on the cusp of getting a college football playoff, and they've won a couple of Rose Bowls, including last time they were they were there. They routed Iowa because they were a much better football team. It's starting to kind of go in a, in a different direction. And so two out of three losing seasons, not great. If they're able to bounce back with an eight, nine win campaign, th- then I will keep his grade here overall at an A minus. But if it's a if it's a three and nine, four and eight season, then that's going to drop significantly because now it, it's not an aberration where you know you had a down year and that and that and you know in the in the shortened year they were good, but kind of hard to have big takeaways there. They come back and, and then they went three and nine a season ago, and they've just lost themselves when it comes to their identity. They they don't look the same, uh, you know, a, as they did when they were at their peak, when they were running the ball really well and they had big physical defenses that made it hard to run on them. That, that just wasn't the case. They had one of, if not the worst rush defense in the conference a season ago. That is very, very antith- antithetical to, I got it out. Uh, it's very antithetical to what Stanford football has become known for and, and what they are really, really good at. But the recruiting is, you know, still in a decent, it's still in a pretty good spot. I'd say overall it's trending down a touch, but recruiting, I give David Shaw a B plus. And remember, if you haven't heard the other coach evaluations, I've already done Chip Kelly. I've already done Jonathan Smith. I'm going to go through the guys who have actually been coaches in the conference before I get to the ones who are coming over as first time uh, coaches in the conference of champions, whether they've been previous head coaches or not. But there, there are five areas where I'm giving grades here, right? There's an overall, which is an A- minus at this point for Shaw when you look at the totality of his tenure. There's recruiting, game management and scheme, player development, and then the fifth one is assistant hires. So every coach gets a grade for all that sort of stuff. And Shaw, A- minus overall, B- plus in, in the recruiting ranks. And it's tough to recruit at Stanford, but... They've also had perennial top 30 high school classes, which which is pretty darn impressive. It, it really is when you think about, you know, they can't just go after anyone. They're going after a specific sort of someone because the other aspect of a Stanford education is still highly involved when you're recruiting players to, to play football for the Cardinal. Now, the reason that I say the recruiting is trending down. In college football, the transfer portal is here. With the one-time freebie rule, it's here to stay. Genie's out of the bottle. You can't put it back in. The transfer portal is there, and Stanford, it seems, based on the rankings from 24-7 Sports, is not even pretending to acknowledge that the transfer portal exists. The last three years, their transfer portal halls have ranked 115th nationally, 242nd, and 235th. You might be wondering, well, wait a minute, Spencer, how many FBS schools are there? That's a great question, Pac-12 sports fan. And let me tell you, the answer is 130. So they're not going at it with great volume, nor are they going at it with great success. And that speaks to what I was just talking about a moment ago, talking about the recruiting limitations you have there. You can't just bring in anybody to Stanford. The school does not allow that. You have to bring in the sorts of players who are going to be academically eligible and can succeed in a major way in the classroom. That's a big part of coming to Stanford. And what makes it all the more impressive is that they've been at a level where you talk about them in the context of the college football playoff or where you talk about them as a a Pac-12 contender or a Pac-12 favorite and Rose Bowl champions. And they want a fiesta. I mean, they've won, you know, two New Year's Six BCS Bowls or sorry, three while David Shaw has been there one while he was the offensive coordinator and two while he was the head coach. And then they've been to two more as well. So it, it's really tough, but the problem with that is they might have to adapt that in some way because other teams are going to be able to capitalize on the portal and bring in anybody who's available 
who can improve their roster, fill a hole right now, while the younger guys, the, the high school recruits develop, who might not be ready to step in and contend or and contribute on a team that wants to contend for a Pac-12 championship. But Stanford is just not about that. I mean, those ratings are kind of hard to believe, but they're sticking to their formula. And and I, I just wonder if there will come a point in time where they have to look at it and go, okay, we can't keep up with the other teams that are able to fill the holes on their roster immediately, whereas we have to rely on, on the player development of, of our high school recruits or you know bring in the sorts of guys who can contribute really, really early in their careers. That's going to be really, really difficult, and I think a challenge for them going forward, but I, I still keep recruiting a B-plus because they've got another top 30 class at the high school level, and that's a great place to be to bring in that sort of influx of talent, and especially after a season which they went three and nine. But I, I'm just asking the question here, is that going to come back to bite them that they can't fill holes immediately because of, of what it takes to, to be a football player at Stanford or just a student at Stanford in general? Game management and scheme is uh, the third area where we're judging coaches here on Locked On Pac-12. I give David Shaw a B plus. Now, I think this used to be an A or an A minus. You know, I think he was really at a high level when, when things were rolling. But the last few years, it's just not been as good. They've lost a couple coordinators. I'll get to that to, to round out today's show in, uh, in a moment here. But the thing about David Shaw that I like is he has a clear identity on offense. And Stanford needs to get back to that, you know, being able to run the ball, control the clock. But they have to bring it on the defensive side of the ball as well. And that's not nothing, you know, to know the sorts of players you're looking for out on the recruiting trail and how they're going to fit into your scheme, I think is really important and allows you to have the best possible chance to be successful as a football coach who also happens to be the play caller on, on the offensive side of the ball. So I, I think that he's proven he knows how to win big games and he knows how to dial up offensive performances that are, are able to allow their defense to maybe allow a, a few points here and there. But it has started to falter in the last few years, and the offense has not been what what it used to be. And so, because the defense hasn't been there, they've kind of lost their way in that sense. So I think they have to kind of get back to that. But again, I, I think it used to be maybe an A or A minus. But because Stanford, you know, was never going to bring in like a, a top ten caliber recruiting class like a USC or, or an Oregon could, you know, where they're just loaded up with a bunch of high-end four, maybe some five-star caliber players, and you just throw them out there and you're like, oh, those are just, you know, borderline NFL guys already at, at this particular age. And I, I think Stanford has always, you know, not in the way that like a Cal or Oregon State or Colorado does, but in some ways they have to do a little bit more with, with less in that sense. Not majorly, but so I'll, I'll still keep him at a B plus there. Player development, this stays at an A-. You know, Even through their struggles, they've continued to send players to the NFL. There's Cardinal players all over the league. They're everywhere. I forgot that Dalton Schultz went to Stanford. You know, I mean, he's one. He's not even the best tight end. Zach Ertz is probably the best tight end Stanford has sent. But they've you know had, had a bunch of guys there. Parkinson was just recently taken by the Seahawks. Andrews Pete, the offensive lineman. You know, if you go way back, there have been uh, several quarterbacks come through. Who, who've come, uh, you know, if you're looking at it just from a, a college perspective, actually, hold on, let me finish my NFL thought. Um, that was just a sidebar, and I got sidetracked in my notes in any way. But they've sent a lot of guys to the NFL who, who have had success. And when you draft a player from Stanford, there's an expectation. You know, Solomon Thomas didn't work out, but those sorts of guys are, you know, the the players that, that Stanford's capable of sending, they can be good players, and they have been, particularly in the trenches. You know, offensive and defensive linemen, I think, is where, the Cardinal have really made their money when you're talking about the pro players. And then, of course, there's Christian McCaffrey, uh, who, who, by the way, was a four star running back when he came out of high school, but didn't have any like big, big time offers. Like there was no Alabama or a Georgia, LSU, Ohio State. They weren't in. I don't know what exactly they were missing, but Stanford, of course, maximized his potential to the fullest. And he was robbed of a Heisman trophy in that 2015 16 season. But, you know, all the tight ends, defensive linemen over the years we've seen, you know, and end up going to the NFL. They've had a lot of talent coming through, but they've developed it very well. You know, they, they haven't brought in the sorts of players who, you know, like a Kayvon Thibodeau at Oregon who comes through and, you know, is going to be a top pick in the NFL draft. They haven't had that many players of that sort, but they develop it exceptionally well. And that's why I keep this at, at an A minus. 
But also looking at it just from a college perspective, look at the number of quarterbacks they've had come through. Obviously, there was Andrew Luck, but that was, you know, Jim Harbaugh and David Shaw together. But Shaw started with, with Kevin Hogan, who was only a three-star recruit, and he turned into a really solid college quarterback. And then they've had Tanner McKee, Davis Mills, who, you know, have shown some nice things. Mills is now the starter for the Houston Texans. Didn't see that one coming, but McKee might very well be a, a mid to late round draft pick at the quarterback position. They've had uh, several guys come through with success, and I think that speaks to their player development. And again, it goes back to what I was talking about, having a clear identity, knowing what you need from each position and recruiting the sorts of players who can do just that, I think has been something that Shaw and his staffs have been really exceptional at. Speaking of those staffs, as we round out his uh, coaching evaluation here, the offensive coordinator for Stanford currently is Tavita Pritchard, who's been in the role since 2018. He's a former Stanford quarterback. The defensive coordinator is Lance Anderson, who was also hired in uh, 2018 and has been on staff for the Cardinal in some capacity since 2007. I'm not going to go through all of them because there's a, a whole litany of coordinators that they've had. But, you know, there have been a couple guys who David Shaw has gotten hired as head coaches. You know, Mike Bloomgren, former offensive coordinator. He's the head coach at Rice. And I, I wouldn't say and Derek Mason as well left to be the head coach at Vanderbilt, which talk about tough places to win. That's it's pretty brutal. But when I think about, you know, incredible elite staffs or places that are just churning out future head coaches to be or you're just kind of always watching like, oh, when is that program's offensive or defensive coordinator going to get plucked away? I haven't thought of Stanford in that way in a significant sense. They've had some good ones over the years, but I think assistant hires are kind of at a C plus. Like they've been fine, they've been solid, and again, I'm not handing out A's and A minuses here. Like I think their player development is an A minus because it's been really, really good. I am uh, I am not a high school or college professor or teacher that's going to just give out A's and A minus. No, 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 you got to earn it here on the show, and they definitely have in that sense. But assistant hires, eh, they've been fine, right? They've been solid, and I, I think that. You know, overall, he still got the A minus. He still gets the A minus overall grade because of what he was. That's the highest grade I've given out so far. Chip Kelly and Jonathan Smith were both B pluses, I, I believe. I should know that off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure I gave both a, a, a B or a B plus, which is a great place to be. But Shaw definitely gets an A minus for what he did. But he, he's got to start to turn things around, or else that grade is going to drop. I appreciate everyone listening. I will see you next time, and have a wonderful rest of your day.